ready to put the wheel back in the scooter now. I've got my new tyre on. This spacer goes this side. On the disc side, you have this spacer. I've also noticed that the, the belt adjuster bolt on both sides is once you've got the wheel out it's visible here so before I put my wheel back in I will put some grease on this part of the bolt which obviously is going to be subject to quite a lot of corrosion um, and hopefully that will prevent future problems of the belt uh, the bolt getting seized I'm also going to need to put the brake caliper bracket in place before you put the wheel in. If your pads have remained in the carrier like this, just move them out slightly so there's a bit of a larger gap than the disc so that it makes it easier. When you wheel the wheel in, the disc is going to go between those pads so you need them to have a little bit of space. So don't take them out, well you can do, but don't. Well, I would say don't take them out, just ease them out so you've got a bit more space. On the back of the carrier you've got this slot which lines up, corresponds with this uh, protruding part here. So that's going to sit there with the wheel in place and with the spindle coming through here. So I need to kind of balance that there while we put the wheel in place. So I'm in position, got my uh, bracket there, caliper bracket, and I'm going to put the wheel in place. You'll probably find that the caliper falls down. If it does, you could move it out of the way, you can get it in in a moment. Right, so I've just got it broadly in position. I'm going to put the caliper bracket back. So the caliper bracket is just hanging on that uh, protrusion again. Got both my spaces in correctly, and I'm going to move the wheel forward. And the main difficulty is getting the disc in between the brake pads without the caliper bracket falling off again. Okay, I'm going to try and put a piece of wood underneath the wheel just to bring it up a bit. Again. Okay, so now it's in place. Really it's just a bit of fiddling around, mainly with the caliper side bracket and trying to get the wheel plus the both spacers moving forward and the brake disc to go in between the brake pads and not have the caliper bracket fall off. So I've got it in position, the piece of wood underneath helped so maybe I'd recommend having a little block handy, 2 inch wood thick. And now I can move the wheel forward so the spacer is towards the front of the available um, adjustment. So I've got it right forward and now I can hopefully hook my belt on. Yeah, so the belt goes on quite easily. And then I'm going to wheel, wheel it back towards me. 
like so. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the spindle in. So I've got the spindle which I have cleaned and greased beforehand. I'm going to lift it on a piece of clean plastic. And now I'll probably have to lift and wiggle a bit to get the spindle through. Okay, so it's through to this side. And there we are. Okay, so I've not required a hammer. I'm not hammering on this. It's just a case of moving around, tipping it and so on in order to get the spindle to go through. So I wouldn't recommend hammering. If you're hammering, maybe something isn't lined up quite correctly. You may need to push the piston back slightly. You could just push it back a couple of millimetres by hand. And then it goes straight on easily. Okay, so I've extended my adjusters to approximately where they were when I took it off. And it's equal both sides. And if I check the tension on my belt with this optical meter, it's 63.6. And I know it was about 85 when I took it apart, when I took it off. So at the moment my belt is not tight enough. Now I need to make sure it's adjusted the same amount on both sides of the wheel. So one way you can do this is use a pair of uh, calipers like this. And you can measure from the square edge where the bolt comes out to the front of the aluminium block. So at the moment, mine's 31 millimetres. And I made it the same on the other side. And so now I can adjust it by the same amount on both sides. So I can either count the number of flats that I turn it by. Ninety-three. So I'm happy with that. That's with the wheel bolt on the spindle tightened up fully. I'll talk it in a minute. I know that both sides are equal because I've measured it with uh, the calipers, and I'll probably just recheck it again in a minute. So I've got 32 mil gap between that face and that face on this side, and I'll check it on the other side and then I'll just torque up my wheel nut and put my belts back on.